Music is an incredible thing, and it affects your brain in more ways than you could possibly imagine. Music has been linked to producing better results in athletes, enhancing creativity and focus in artists, and even retrieving lost memories for Alzheimer's, dementia, and stroke victims. But why do we love music in the first place? It isn't born from an evolutionary compulsion. Listening to the strokes didn't help our ancestors avoid being eaten by saber-toothed tigers. So then why do we have this yearning for it? Well, as it turns out, the answer is actually chemical. This is Amy Baird. My name is Dr Amy Baird and I'm a clinical neuropsychologist. And she's been studying the effects of music on the brain for the past 13 years. But how is our brain able to convert what is essentially compressed airwaves into sounds that our brain can understand? Behind our ears are the temporal lobes, and within the temporal lobes we have the auditory cortex, so that's really where sound gets converted into what we hear in our brains, if you like. A study published in 2011 indicated that when we listen to music, dopamine is released in an area of the brain called the striatum. The striatum is an ancient part of the brain and is responsible for the release of dopamine during all sorts of pleasurable activities. Meaning that when you listen to The weekend, you're actually getting the same sort of rush that you'd experience from eating chocolate, having sex, or even snorting cocaine. The study found that dopamine levels increased not only during the listener's favourite part of the song, but also during the section just before it. This is known as the anticipatory listening phase, and can be triggered by changes in the song such as an increase in tempo or the removal of musical elements, like in a breakdown. This might help explain why dance music fans love what they call the drop. I'm sorry, the drop? <laughs> But this sort of tension and release isn't just exclusive to dance music. It's present in all forms of music, and it's what makes pop music so enjoyable and catchy. What's happening when you're listening to pop music is that your brain is predicting when the tension is going to be released. And when it gets this right, it creates a buildup of dopamine. But it's not just a happy pill. Music has been proven to help athletes run faster, longer, and harder. And in creative pursuits, the associations between classical music and focus have been well documented. But music can also have the ability to heal. And this is where Amy comes back into it. Yeah, so the study that I did with um, five people with severe brain injury was really to get an idea if people with severely injured brains could have memories evoked by music. Um, and I found that compared with healthy people who had no brain injury and they were usually the people's partners or a family member, the people with brain injury were just as good at um, having memories stimulated by music. So despite having quite injured brains and having difficulty remembering other types of information, the music was still very effective at stimulating memories. Amy found out that even though some of her patients were unable to recall things such as their partner's name or where they lived, when played a song from the top 100 music charts from their 20s, which is when memory formation is at its most effective, patients were able to recall vivid memories of that time, including what they were doing, how they were feeling, and who they were with. Amy's now moved on to see how this sort of auditory stimulation could be used to recover memories in Alzheimer's and dementia patients. Memory, turn your face to the moon. So how is memory so intertwined with the music from our past? Well, it might have something to do with how music, unlike any other type of sound, stimulates your entire brain, including your memory center. Music actually activates or fires up all parts of the brain, which is, you know, why it has such a powerful effect on people. So it, it activates the motor region, so we move and dance to music. It activates the emotional parts of the brain, the parts of the brain that control processing emotions, so we have emotional reactions to music. And it activates the memory centers, so we have memories stimulated by music. So it's a really powerful stimulus in that it's, you know, an all-brain stimulus. Mm. 
So as much as you hate that One Direction song now, it's still stimulating your entire brain, and in the future, it may very well be your link to the past. The Rio de Janeiro 2016 Olympic Games are well and truly underway. But behind the Coca Cabana, the sunshine and the beautiful people, the Olympic City has a dark and brutal history. That's next week on The Science of Everything.